Bum 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 bum. Bum 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 bum. Hey everybody, my name is Jeff. This is James, Scott, Jordan, and Andrew, and we are Veritas. Thanks for listening to Veritox, and we have a wonderful special guest for you today. So Jordan, tell us a little bit about who we got on with us today. Yeah, we have a just world-renowned uh, studio singer and arranger. His name is Tim Davis. He's worked on some incredible projects. He's done over 800 arrangements for Glee. He was known as like the guy wow. for Glee. He's also currently working with Barbara Streisand, singing background vocals for her. He's working on uh, Celine Dion's vocals for her newest album. Uh, he's worked with Adina Menzel on her new Christmas album. Just Lady Gaga, crazy amounts of awesome stuff for you guys to, to hear about. So if you want you to tune in. James and I got to interview Tim and it was awesome getting to talk to him. He's one of those guys that I have looked to as just a huge inspiration as a singer, as a person, as a arranger. Um, he is just so good at what he does. and. He's a really humble guy. It was yeah. amazing getting to talk to him. James and I got to do that. And James, you actually have, I've never met him um, other than our interview, but James, you met him in Nashville. He was doing a studio singing intensive, right? Yeah, so like something that he started recently was uh, a studio singer intensive for people who want to learn how to be better studio singers. And he came to Nashville and did one and I got to go and be a part of that. It was an incredible experience. And we talk a lot about that on our interview today. And he's just a, he's just a cool guy. You know, he's yeah, funny. Sure. He's his, like Jordan, you were mentioning his credits, his list of credits is miles long of the things that he's worked on, but he's just so kind and humble. And it really was an honor to get to talk to him, you know? Sure. That's awesome. I'm, I'm excited to hear the interview. Uh, so we hope you guys enjoy it. We're going to go ahead and jump in and let James and Andrew uh, take you on this interview with our friend, Tim Davis. Yeah. So um, I had met a lady two weeks prior at a conference who I didn't know that she was a vocal contractor in LA, but she had asked me to call her when I got to town and I did. And she hired me for the Spider-Man movie, the first Spider-Man movie, two weeks after we got there. And it just kind of picked up from there. You know, God was proving to me again you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Like do what I'm asking you to do. And yeah. I will absolutely hook you up much better than any person could, or certainly yourself. Yeah. You know, so we wanted to, first of all, the, you know, we've are huge fans of all the things you've worked on and produced and sung on. And, but James and I have nerded out pretty hardcore on a, a certain thing that you have worked on. And I don't know that you okay. you would guess what it is. It's okay. the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween show. <laughs> it is oh so my. good. It's so fun. <laughs> James Thank and I you. have been in the car and have listened to that and just been like, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I revisit it every six months or so. Did I send oh, that to so you, James? Fun. Say that again. Did I send that to you? Fenton Hammerley sent that to me. Oh my gosh, Fenton. I uh, I listen to it about every six months or so when I'm feeling really good about myself and I need to come down a couple of notches. <laughs> oh my gosh. I just remember this is the standard. <laughs> we oh, it's so fun. Thank you. How long um, did it take you to, cause you do every voice on that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How long did that take you to record? Um, we had moved to LA at that point and Mark Hammond called me and said, um, Hey, I have this thing and I would love you to do it. Can you come to Nashville and do this with me? So I was like, absolutely. So I flew in, went to his studio at 9 a.m and finished at 3 a.m. What? So you did all of that in <laughs> the 18 hours? Uh -huh. Do you know how but, freakish that is? Well, 
I don't know. I mean, um, you know, Mark obviously had the track done yeah. and I did, you know, like where, where the melodies would go and everything, but I, I did the arranging as we went. And I just, when, when I get in that space of creating and arranging, I go so fast. I, I got yeah. my mind. I, my voice has to catch up with my mind, you know? Yeah. Nice. Um, and I just love it. And I, I love challenging myself seeing how, Oh, there needs to be another part above that. Oh, even higher than that. And yeah. I'm just like <laughs> trying to, <laughs> trying to see if I can really actually squeeze out one more, one more floor. But, um, yeah, it was, it was, what's the word? It was super exciting for me. And to, and to imagine that I would hear my, voice at disneyland during the fireworks show i was like wow. this is amazing i can't wait to go home and take my son to the park and then yeah yeah is it still running at disneyland yeah so i'm gonna talk, i'm gonna pivot here and because you okay. opened up about learning about the union and everything and now you're you're starting to teach younger singers about mm -hmm the ins and outs of the industry and how to break into the industry. I know, Andrew, you work with a lot of college students uh, in Mobile, right? Yeah. And yeah, I, work at, I work at the University of Mobile. I teach commercial voice. Oh, okay. And a lot of students there that are really interested in you know, singing and background vocals. And I guess a, quest, a good question would be, you know, you've with what you've done with the intensives, first of all, is is awesome and a big thing we're talking Thank about you. with these these vlogs is big ideas and what a what a great idea because there was no <laughs> i mean there was no real hands-on training for background vocals right yeah there and still so isn't just, yeah it's just a great great idea but i guess my question would be for students or someone that is wanting to jump into that world what would it, what would be a, a word of encouragement or piece of advice you would give them? Um, well, it's, it's hard, especially, you know, if you're not in a town that has the industry in it um, or, you know, that kind of culture recording. Uh, about mobile do you guys have any kind of recording facility there or they get experience we do we, we at least at the university we've got a really great studio so they get a lot oh, of hands so on great on those. um but yeah totally mobile is not the it's not the rock and no but if, you, if they have they have um if you have a facility there that's so fantastic yeah, i think the, the best way to learn as a singer who you are to know the limits of your voice, to know the, the specific styles that you're good at or not good at mm -hmm. is to record and to, because oftentimes, well, for people who are self-aware, we're the, we're the biggest critics of our own yeah. skills, you know? Yeah. And so if you, if you're in a place where you can really like exercise that and learn it's just the quickest way to learn your voice your limitations um and experiment and it's just so i, I just love it so much um mm -hmm. yeah i would love to come out and do something with your students out there it'd be so fun that would be awesome i mean really because i know you've got some great singers out there you Thank started you. the intensive for the purpose of helping Train. I started. Fingers. Yeah, I started the intensive. So when I first came to LA, I I was kind of intimidated, pretty intimidated, because I was like, well, these are the big guns, you know. Mm -hmm. Nashville's small town, but LA singers, whoa. Yeah. So I went to this session, but I remember it so clearly. The first session that I had, and I was surrounded by thirty nine other singers, some of whom. I'm just, you know, it, it, they should not have been there. 
they sure. their voices were raggedy they were aged out some um, over here couldn't read this person was out of tune this person was my broad I was just like blah, blah, blah. and there was no accountability there's no really? accountability so i yeah. said someone has to do something to raise the bar in this town um in our industry as a whole also i remember at that time i was 32 and mm. i was i was the youngest one in the room which yeah. in nashville i was one of the older ones in the room <laughs> so really? that's that's really telling yeah now i'm 33 and i'm the youngest <clears throat> one in the room here wow see there needs to be a changing of the guard it is it's shifting but for the most part it's that same i'm sure it's a cycle <clears throat> yeah i'm sure it's a cycle but you know there are people who were 70 years old on this session really and i'm like okay you're not an instrumentalist you're a singer your voice has deteriorated and yeah. it's telling it's obvious yeah um and you know i i don't I get it. I really do get it. It's just like you said, this is built on relationships. People hire their friends. People hire the people they want to be around. And I get that. But it's possible to find people that you want to be around who are still really skilled at what they do. Right. And who have fresh voices. And, yeah, you know, um, and truly, <clears throat> I, I was doing a lot of digging around in the early 2000s in LA about because there was a big complaint about all of the choral work and film score work going to London. Yeah. And I would have meetings with composers, big film composers <clears throat> who would tell me it's not because of price. It's not because we can get it non-union in London on these huge major, on these major motion pictures yeah. We don't, we're not caring about the money we spend. We want the sound. Yeah. That's why we're going to London. It's yeah. not to save a few pennies because actually it's more expensive, but we want the sound. And, you know, we see LA singers come in there. I was told this by probably three different composers, major composers who didn't want to upset anything politically. Sure. They're like, we, we see these singers come in, they look like they don't care. They have scowls on their face. They're standing there like this, singing, ooh. Yeah. They don't care about my music. They don't, they don't seem to have any respect mm -hmm. for what this is or how much we're paying them or they're, they act entitled. They look slovenly. They look like they just rolled out of bed and stumbled onto the session floor. I, I'm like, that's exactly what I thought. But I <laughs> thought I was the only one who would feel that way. Yeah. Or the only one who noticed. So um, I ended up um, just kind of like dreaming about what could I do to raise the bar? Well, when I started contracting, I actually... I remember my first film score that I got, I sent out a, an email to the singers that I was hiring with a dress code. Nice. <laughs> I said, please dress like a, a professional. This job with me is your interview for the next one with yeah. me. Yeah. So act like you care. Act like you actually are grateful to be there. Yeah. And I got to say, it's really interesting I've seen a shift and I, you know, I see guys actually wearing a jacket. Some people come in ties. Ladies are looking nice. It, and it's not about, you need to look a certain way. It's about showing respect yeah. to, to the people that have gone before you and paved the way so that you can right. make a living right. in this industry. It's such a privilege. Yeah. But people yeah. act so entitled. Like, I'm the best. I've been the best since I was a small child. I should have won American Idol, but I didn't. Yeah. But now I'm going to sing on sessions and I'm going to lower myself to sing on sessions. I just want to, 
I can get my gun yeah. as a card carrying <laughs> member of the NRA. <laughs> I, are you I'm really? not actually. I'm actually not. I'm not actually. <laughs> I have one. I don't have a card for it. But I well, have, look at you. Have you have to be protected, James. No. In my car. You never know when those booglers going to come. Booglers. Booglers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway. when you started, so you started the intensive, like, did you get the response you wanted? Like. It was 2014. Yeah. I was shooting blind because there was no model for it. Yeah. There was no prototype. I was creating it and I just had no idea. So I, I'm kind of, the, I'm the kind of person who does everything like crazy big, like on a grand scale. I, I have this, if, if it's not done with the most incredible thing, uh, then it's not worth doing. Sure. So, and that, um, puts most people including me into the poor house i lost so much money on the first on the first one that i did actually on the first two that i did but then i kind of got a clue but i did it at sony pictures yeah it was like 20 grand for the studio for, for two days yeah i was like boy i better make some money and then i was like well i can't just give them little snacks i'm not going to give them potato chips so i got full catering for every meal every, you know each day and I'm I got water bottles made glass water bottles with a logo inscription etched yeah. into the glass yeah. I had um, a photographer come videographers come I flew in Lisa Cochran and Maribeth um, Quinn from Nashville nice. to like demonstrate what it was like we would do we would do demonstration mm -hmm. stuff together I hired four vocal coaches and I did like it was it was so over the top. It was just way too much, and I lost probably fifteen grand. But <laughs> yeah, maybe not the best business person. But I've learned. <laughs> but I am learned. learning. <laughs> but I am learning. Um, yeah. And so th that was a two day affair, yeah. and we would I would bring them in, and I would just. I wanted them to feel like what it was like on a real professional session. And yeah. a lot of these people, most of them were wanting to get into the industry. Most of them were younger and some really great singers that I found through the years. It started in 2014 with the first one. Um, really great singers who are worthy of being, of working, you know, yeah. but we're not given the opportunity because people weren't passing the baton yeah or opening up the door so i really wanted it to become a an avenue not only where people by which people were trained on mm -hmm. etiquette and you know like the very basics of actually you want to take that off your ear so that you can yeah. hear the people around you because they're like Hello, <laughs> yeah that's not gonna work as well so <laughs> i want to remove okay so um <laughs> for real um yeah. but you know just like and then a person pointing out to me in one of the in one of the intensives um you made a mistake here in the chart so mm. that's a c sharp not a c natural just wanted you to mm. yeah actually that's not anything you'd want to do on a real session fyi yeah yeah oh. so, this is what we call a teachable moment you know because singers are singers again like i was i was thinking you know you have dancers who are rare in this environment competitive it's competitive but it's all team yep. you're in you're grown you rate you're raised in this environment that's like you know you're it's so disciplined and all about teamwork and yeah, yeah. singers are about solo baby baby you are going to be the next star of the voice I'm going to make sure you're on that show. You're going to win. <laughs> Christina Aguilera is going to look at you and say, <laughs> she's going to pound that button for you. You know, it's so, it's all perspective. And so bringing all these people from every different walk into this environment is really, um, it's interesting because you see the different dynamics and how you have to layer, like level the playing field and just say, Hey, that is not acceptable. 
that will never fly. Shut your mouth. You're out of tune. You're flat. What? And you know, they look at you like, yeah. what? I had this one intensive um, last year, actually. It's probably about 50 singers. And I in was Los doing a, in LA. Okay. And, you know, some great singers. But I, I was doing a gospel, t- like a Kirk Franklin tune mm-hmm. that night. And I had, <laughs> I had three microphones set up with baffles around them. And I had one group here, one group here, one group here. And it was a disaster. Mm. Some of the people were classical singers who were not self-aware enough to know this is not something I should do. Sure. This is not something I should try. So I was like, okay, I'll take volunteers. Who, who ever feels like this is your wheelhouse? Go ahead and get up and get around the mic. Everyone rushes, phew, rushes to the microphone. And I said, um, okay, so let's try it. And the, the singers were around, around the mic and it was embarrassing. So I said, okay, let's stop. I don't remember what was the song. I don't remember some great Kirk Franklin tune. Mm-hmm. Um, and the whites were just, you know, <laughs> and they had no, like, no <laughs> idea that they were bad. Yeah. Oh, I said, okay, man. so this is what we're going to do. I said, that was embarrassing. Mm. And, so, and many of you do not belong around this mic. Mm. And I hope you know who you are. Um, so I'm going to give you the opportunity to sit down now because this is not your wheelhouse. Yeah. So please sit down. If you know that this is not, and nobody, everyone's just staring at me like, Oh, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, seriously, none of you, none of you, all of you feel like this is your wheelhouse. Mm. That's why you're still standing there. Mm. And wow. I, I mean, I was just dumbfounded. Sure. So, and and they're all oh. just staring at me like I said, "Oh, okay, you want me to call you out?" And someone said, "Yeah." I said, "Okay, sit oh down, sit God. down, sit down, sit down. <laughs> you bad, awful, horrible. Oh. Sit down, sit down, sit down." I was left with like three people. Yeah. Wow. And they were they were looking at me. I'm like, "Look, I am sorry. You didn't pay to come here for me to blow." smoke up your skirt right. you need to be told the truth yeah this will that will only hurt you you yeah. must learn to be self-aware and know what you can and can't do you cannot do that style i'm sorry yeah. uh, and i'm assuming that when you walk up to the mic you're giving me your best like you're putting your best foot forward that's embarrassing yeah <laughs> yeah that you wonder why wrong. you're not working well that's why you're not working yeah well i have a story so, about when you came to Nashville and you did the intensive here. What happened? Like, well, and we did a, con- you did a condensed version here. Like yes. five hours. We started at six, went to 11 or something like that. Oh, like okay. We, we set up all of these different scenarios. So we did a big gospel thing. Was it just one day? It was one Was it only day. one day? Oh, okay, yeah, okay. At Ocean Way. And yes. so... We started with a gospel thing, then you went to a jazz, like Mr. Sandman thing that you did for Bette Midler's record. And then we did the uh, Peter Pan, You Can Fly. Oh, yeah. And then you ended the night with this Anthony Evans riff, (laughs) this riff that you had produced for Anthony Evans' record. Yeah. And it was this twisty, turny thing. And I sat there and I thought, "Mm -mm. (laughs) mm-mm. And then all these groups of singers started getting up and they were nailing it. At least in my mind, they were nailing it. And, and then I thought, well, maybe I'll just give it a whirl. <laughs> so you called for the last group of singers. And I got up there with some, some other people and you hit the play button. And you know, what, you know what it looks like when someone's like trying to find a straw and they can't find it. It's like... Yeah, that was me. And I, <laughs> and I turned to to a couple friends of mine in the room. I was like, "Not my lane, y'all. Not oh. my lane." You know, but like, 
I, of course, I knew it wasn't my lane, but I thought, well, what the hey, I'll try. Well, you and I, I love that, though, because you that's what I want it to be is a place where people feel safe enough that they can experiment and, and really learn. No, that's not me. Yeah. But you had enough self-awareness to be able to admit it and say, hmm, not for me. Mm-mm. A lot of people just don't know yeah. that, that they need to be told. Yeah. And, you know, I wish someone had told me stuff. Sure. <laughs> but most producers don't know how to communicate to singers because they're instrumentalists. Yeah. Right. Most of them. Well, and it was such a great experience. It was one of the greatest experience, learning experiences for me as a singer mm-hmm. going to your intensive because that's so encouraging. Like, well, it was like, it was, I, okay, here is, here's where I am based on this. And this is what I can work on to get better, you know? And it was the first yeah. time I felt like I had instruction on how to do that, you know? Um, because you're right. Mm. Most of the time when people get hired for sessions, you just get thrown into it and you learn it's trial by fire, you know? And yeah. sometimes you get hired again and sometimes you don't you know, but it was just so, it was so encouraging to, to be able to at least get an idea of, okay, where do I fit in this world? You know? Yeah. What are the lanes that I can truly run in? And then also learning how, like, what is the demand for those lanes? You know, Mm. pop sessions are probably more in demand than classical or musical theater you know, type sessions, depending on what city you're in and stuff. Yeah, Um, that's true. But anyway. That's true. Just some thoughts. I love that. I I love to hear that. It's hard. That was hard for me coming to Nashville. I was encouraged to to do it by some friends. But at the same time, I felt like I don't want to appear like I'm some big shot coming back home to teach the little people, you know, because Nashville singers are incredible. They always have been. Yeah. And I actually felt like, I don't, I don't know if I have anything <laughs> to share. I, I, that's how I felt when I came there and to see the response from the people and the feedback that I had was just so gracious and well, wonderful. So I hope you made money on that one. I didn't. Anyway, <laughs> oh, I was okay. I'm sure it was fine. But you didn't come to it, Andrew. You didn't care about things. I know. Oh, I would have loved it. <laughs> Andrew's actually really, really good in the studio. I bet he is. Like I love, I love singing in the studio. I do. You do. Mm-hmm. What do y'all think of Voctiv? Have we talked about it? Voctiv. Love Voctiv. Love Jamie In Orlando. Yeah, Jamie Ray. Such a great arranger. What a talent. Mm -hmm. I do want to ask you a question because this is kind of where I am in my own journey, in my own, as a singer and as a human being. Mm -hmm. Um... You've accomplished so many things in your, like your list of credentials is unbelievable to look at, you know, like it's intimidating, you know, but I celebrate that. We celebrate that for you because like, it's, it's truly amazing, you know, and. Just remember, just remember though, that I was rejected by truth. And I was rejected by the Gaither vocal band. Were you really? Yeah. <laughs> what part did you? Yeah. <laughs> what part did you audition for? I knew, I knew Guy Penrod and Mark Lowry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And David Phelps. Um, and it was that group when Mark Lowry was leaving. Yeah. Guy called me. I, we had just moved to LA, and Guy called me to come out an audition for Bill. And so I sang with Guy and David. Oh my gosh, that was a dream. I'll never forget that unless I get the dementias. 
but it was <laughs> it was really it was really wonderful i so. i think singers in particular this is kind of going back to what you were saying about uh knowing <clears throat> your lane and that sort of thing i think singers in particular really struggle with being able to separate our self-worth from the level of success that we achieve in our careers i think that part is part of the star mentality the culture you know we live for the applause and at times and i i don't it's something that i've struggled with and something that i'm still wading through you know how to on the days when my career seems to be more um lackluster how do i still maintain my sense of worthiness you know as a human for love and belonging you know um yeah i don't know i i just when i talk to other singers here in town i get i get the same kind of feedback you know i don't know um i think for me it's been a journey for me as well and i i think of two different I'm thinking of two different things. Mainly, it used to bother, well, we talked earlier about fear. Yeah. Fear of the opinion of other people is such a trap. Yeah. So it's such a spirit over our industry. Um, and no one is exempt from it unless you're intentional about combating it. And the only way I know to combat it is to be intentionally grateful for jobs you don't get that mm. you want that someone else gets. Mm -hmm. That was a huge test for me early on in Nashville. I remember when I was, when I was starting to get into sessions and I was working a lot, I, I wanted to be doing more records and Michael Mellett was doing all the records and that bothered me <laughs> yeah because I I wanted that to be me but I remember intentionally like thanking God every time I'd hear that he was doing a record that I wanted to do I would say thank you that I'm not doing that because you you don't want me to do it and mm -hmm. I asked, I would bless Michael. I would ask God to bless him. <clears throat> and, um, you know, that was just one thing that I knew I had to do. Otherwise this whole, like, it's the spirit of fear. It's the spirit of, um, uh, it, and then it, it goes into when it seeps into you, it can become bitterness yeah. and resentment. Yeah. And, discouragement and just everything that's gross. So I, I just found that that really like nipped it in the bud for me. Like I, and it wasn't anything that I truly felt, but it was a decision that I would make and my feelings would follow. Yeah. Um, so, but then I also remember when I was working on Glee, I, this was the most intense job I had ever had. It sure. was, probably the best job I had ever had both monetarily and creatively I would uh, we were doing we did uh, uh, over 800 songs in the six years that we did it and from every genre imaginable mm -hmm. and we were cutting we were cutting a master record every 10 days basically mm -hmm. So day after day after day, I was being tested with creativity to come up with arrangements and ideas and stuff that, you know, it was, it was beyond me. I, I couldn't do it. Um, certainly without God's help. Yeah. <laughs> I, <clears throat> but I remember becoming attached to that work. Yeah. I remember becoming attached to the title. Oh, Tim's the Glee guy. Oh, Tim's 
Tim has the Glee singers. Tim hires the Glee singers. Oh, those are the Glee singers. Those are Tim's singers. And I, I got used to that. Yeah. And I became known for it. And I remember God showed me a picture one day in the middle of that, of, of holding tight onto something. And he said, you have to let go of mm. this. Yeah. It's becoming a part of your identity and I, and it will cripple you. I can't give you the next thing. If your hands are like this, mm. you've got to let go yeah. and have your hands like this because the kingdom of God is fluid. I, it's always moving. I'm not stuck here with you on glee. I'm out here on the right. next thing that I have for you on the next chapter that I have for you. So let go, yeah. let go of it. Stop identifying yourself as I'm the glee arranger. I'm the glee, whatever. Sure. Stop it. Just be like this, be grateful for this moment because it's going to be gone like that. And indeed yeah. it was. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to bring you the next thing. Keep your hands open. Yeah. So that for me, kept me from being you know like kept me from attaching my value to a project yeah or an identity yeah know? yeah i think every see every chapter that i've been in in my life there's been something different but i've in his mercy god just keeps like hey <laughs> yeah over here yeah it's not that's not it you, like I'm, I'm bringing you something new. There's something new all the time. Um, so I don't know. Yeah. That does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. It does. That's awesome. I, yeah. It's a, and a lot of that is rooted in comparison and comparing ourselves to other people, comparing our success to theirs, our failures to theirs, you know, all of that stuff. It's easy to do. Yeah. And mm -hmm. It, it's hard for me at times just to remember, you know what? God has me doing this for this group of people. And he has this person over here doing this for this group of people, you know? And sometimes those circles can become concentric, you know? But it's just showing up and being faithful to what he's called us to do every day, you know? And being grateful. As yeah. kind of cliche as it sounds, it gratitude truly is the way out of these traps yeah truly just like <laughs> thank you god i wanted that job though well but thank you i <laughs> you yeah. know i wanted that job but thank you mm -hmm. yeah thank you because you have something else for me yeah i'm grateful and that yeah. keeps you in such a free place yeah, yeah. for sure well i think we will wrap up our time if it's okay we do this at the end of every interview what's Which, that by the way we do a rapid fire kind okay, of. okay i'm ready so andrew's gonna do the first five i'll do the last five okay all right all right here we go rapid fire questions so first what is your favorite meal my wife's meatloaf mm. oh good answer yeah i i i just love food so that's a hard one for me but my wife's meatloaf <laughs> and houston's ribeye yeah. Houston. Yeah. Houston's ribeye. Well, he got stuck. So while he's unstucking, unsticking, oh. we were playing a show in Houston, Texas one time. And we went to dinner at Houston's. And it was amazing. I had never been to Houston before. I was from this little podunk town in North Alabama. I'd never been anywhere like that. And so <laughs> we left Houston's and our car got broken into that night. Like we were, we had rented an SUV and it was, um, Oh my gosh. Yeah. At Houston, it got broken into. Yeah. Uh, and all of our stuff was stolen. My backpack was stolen with my, sh with my dress shoes in them, my in-ears were stolen. <laughs> oh my God. My computer, everything. Oh my gosh. Well, we've lost us. Andrew, so I'm going to continue with our rapid fire discussion. Okay. That's uh, favorite style to sing? Um, probably Sinatra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're so good at it. 
<laughs> Thank you. Okay. Last show you binged and loved. Hi, Andrew. Um, last show that I binged and loved. Ooh, that's hard. Because I love different things for different reasons. But I loved um, Man in the High Castle. Yes. Mm. I loved that show. I did too. Uh, let's see. A concert you'll never forget. I mean, I guess it was my first concert, which was probably 1985. <laughs> um, the Manhattan Transfer at the mm. Greek Theater in Phoenix in the round. When I, you know, it's like in, in this round theater. And so entrance to the stage is on these ramps that go toward the center circle. Yeah. That cut through the audience. And so at the end of the show, I jumped up on, I jumped up on the ramp because <laughs> I was such a huge fan. <laughs> and I, I jumped up on the ramp and, and acted like I was part of the crew and just walked backstage because I, Gosh. I wanted to see them. I wanted to meet them so bad. And oh. So I stood there. There was a, I saw their rack of costumes. There was a limo backstage waiting for them. And, and I was just like, I was just frozen. I didn't know where to go, what to do. And then a security guard came and told me to leave. But I'll never forget that. That, that, was, um, that was an awesome show. My first show. Did they do Birdland? Yeah, of course. Oh my gosh. Hmm. It was in the day of Mecca for Moderns, that record. Yeah. That was hmm. the record. And Extensions, the Twilight Zone record. Nice. So good. Sure. All right. So and, favorite sorry. song. No, go for it. Go for it. I was just going to say, I got to meet Janice Siegel, the alto of the group, two Christmases ago. Um, I reached out to her on Facebook and invited her to my show with Jane Lynch and Kate Flannery doing this Christmas show in New York. And she came and I wanted to, I could, I could have died. It was just, you know, she's sitting down there listening to me <laughs> sing. I was like, oh, how the tables have turned, Janice. <laughs> I could have been in your group. <laughs> Amazing. I wanted to be in that Manhattan Trench for a group. Yeah. Do you have a favorite singer? Or is it kind of the same thing? I have favorite singers for different things. Mm. I think my favorite singer as an artist right now i would just have to say in the top three are my daughter yes summer davis mm -hmm. at summer joy davis is her instagram yes she just put out an ep and it's so she's just so talented and it's so real and authentic and uncontrived and see you later james and um sorry y'all my computer is dying Okay. <laughs> so, you know, uh, so, so, you know, I'm obviously biased in that, but I just think she's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like I have favorite singers that I work with session singers, like Lisa Cochran is still a favorite. Yeah. She's magical. And mm -hmm. Tiffany Coburn is amazing. Yes. And oh. Luke Edgman yep. is amazing. Yes, and Missy Stearns, Missy Hale Stearns is amazing. Oh. And um, Nikki Leonti yes. is amazing. And Amy Joy Weimer is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those, those are the ones that pop yeah. into my mind. Missy Hale is a savant. Is incredible. <laughs> she is incredible. She do with her voice. Since you lived in Nashville for a short period of time, one thing that you miss about living Monells. Monells? Monells. Mo nails. Mo nails. Mo nails in Germantown. Germantown. In Germantown. Okay. Ah oh, man, I love that place. Every, anyone who asks me to go, like, what should I do when I go to Nashville? That's the first answer. Monells, Germantown. Always. Okay. Something people get wrong about you. 
people when they first meet me think that I'm austere and aloof and, and stoic. Really? I've been told that. I've been told that. If they don't know me, I would say people in LA, like singers that haven't worked with me, find me intimidating and mm. I don't know, I don't know why. But when I act goofy, they're like, oh my gosh, I did not expect you to act to be this way. I did not, which I'm like, well, what did you expect? <laughs> I didn't know what they expected. Um, something you're deeply grateful for. Oh my gosh, I'm deeply grateful for my family, my wife and kids. And the stability of our life. I'm deeply grateful for my incredible friends. The older you get, the more you just are like, <laughs> that's what matters. Yeah. That's what matters, your relationships um, and having safe people that you trust and can count on. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I'm just, especially in times like this, yeah. just really grateful really grateful yeah last question your next big idea or dream well i have several i have several desires i i did an, a show after the oscars um in la it was a sinatra show we we performed the, I performed the entire record of live at the Sands right. and there was um, an MD music director who was in town from Vegas, uh, who shares music director. And he went back to Vegas and told this shares manager who's also Pink's and Janet Jackson's manager about nice. me and about the show and said, we need to be, in Vegas doing this on the strip, which I would love to do. Yeah. I've never really wanted to be an artist, but if that were a possibility to do a show the right way with mm -hmm. high level production, <clears throat> I would love it. It felt so freeing. That's it awesome. felt to do that show. It was like the first show that I've ever done solo before in my life, which is weird, but you know, I've just been a background singer. Um, <laughs> So that that would be fun. I also have uh, a TV show that I've written that I want to produce. Nice. And I'm working on. I'm in in the middle of two two for sure two musical features that one I've been working on for ten years with um, a couple of other producers. It takes so long to produce a musical, a yeah. feature, a feature anyway, but a musical from start to finish and getting everything in order as the way it should be. Yeah. And especially with the music, because you have all the musical elements and you need money to produce demos and they've got to be incredible and blah, 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 blah. I said it earlier, but we just can't thank you enough for being willing to do this, Tim. And oh my gosh. It's like, awesome. Well, just appreciate you saying yes. Thank All right, you, I'll, boys. Thank you, man. I'll tell Fenton you said hey. Okay, please sure. do. Yeah. See Bye. you, Tim. Thanks. See you. Wow, uh, guys, that was a really interesting interview. I, super fascinating stuff. I think the mo most interesting thing that I took away from that, he's, he's done amazing things, and it was really interesting, especially as a singer, to watch something like that. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I noticed and one thing that I took away was the gratitude and how he's grateful mm -hmm. for everything, mm -hmm. even the failures and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, I need to start practicing gratitude and, mm -hmm. and really focusing on how that could help me to just be, well, one, grateful. Yeah. And, <laughs> and two, just staying positive in this tricky, tricky field that we mm -hmm. work in as, yeah. as musicians and singers and, 
And yeah, positivity so was, helps with those big ideas. That's why yeah, it's pretty sure. awesome to be there in that mindset. Yeah, it was such a great interview. Uh, and I love seeing all that he is doing, all that he has done. And I have, have a feeling that we've got many more big ideas coming from Tim Davis uh, yeah. down the road. But if you guys want some more interviews like this, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Yeah. And then uh, if you want some bonus material or even some exclusive interviews that aren't released anywhere else, you can go find us on Patreon. You can support us there and you'll get access to just tons of content uh, that you really can't get anywhere else. And you can find us at all forms of social media as well, at Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And we want you to find us there at Veritas5. So we want to say thank you for joining us today, this week on Veritas. And we hope to see you next week so here's to your next big idea. Ta-da!